Welcome back to episode number 11 of the Beyond the Trail podcast, and you all are in for a treat this evening. I am one of your hosts, Julie Gayhart, also known as Jester, and this gentleman right here beside me, Austin, how are you doing this evening? What's up, sports fans? (laughs) I'm excited about tonight. I know. Like this one, I've actually been looking forward to this one. Because we got two really, really great folks uh, on with us tonight. So I'm digging it. They are going to be showing us uh, some of what they've created, some of their behind the scenes. But uh, if everyone listening uh, has not watched our film trailer for Safe and Found, we recommend that you do that directly after the live. You can find that also on the Jester Wallace Productions YouTube channel. You could also find our link to the film. We're hoping each and every one of you will have the opportunity if you live in North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, or any of the surrounding states surrounding North Carolina. We will be showing the premiere on Saturday, January 20th at 2 p.m. at the Haywood Community Center or Haywood College. Haywood Community College. Let me think about that about three times. Haywood Community College Auditorium. Doors will open at 2 o'clock. Our guests this evening, Heidi and Wim, will be there set up with lots of things to sell you all at a proceed or a portion of their proceeds will be going to the Western North Carolina Wilderness Safety Fund. And Austin, we have something to share. We actually got interviewed this afternoon. You want to talk about that? That was that was different because normally we're the ones interviewing. So we got to talk with uh, a reporter from The Mountaineer, which is a newspaper in Waynesville, I believe. So we talked with her for better part of 40 minutes, uh, all about where this idea for Safe and Found came from, how it developed, kind of some of our, our favorite parts. So if you're in the Waynesville area, we're told that probably Saturday is when it's going to come out. I'm personally looking forward to that one because it's always fun to, you know, Julie and I have looked at this project from the inside from the from the very beginning. And now to kind of hear from other people and look at it from the outside a little bit, that'll be that'll be interesting. So I'm looking forward to that. But but yeah, being on the other end of the interview was was a different perspective for sure. <laughs> One of the things that she asked us was um what was our favorite part of the film? Mm. And um we told her We said her, the same thing. But we cannot release it because yeah. we're not telling anybody until they actually see the film. So yeah. the only one on this live with us right now is Heidi, and she has seen it, and she cannot release it either. So uh, she is under a, what do they call it, a gag order? Gag. Is that what? Yep. Yeah. Yep. But it's good. It's going to be worth the wait. Yeah. So again, as soon as we get that link from the Mountaineer, we will blow up your social media like we've been blowing it up over the past three or four days. We are also hoping that there's a newspaper, I think it's the Biltmore, that also releases in the Asheville area. We're hoping that will get released there as well. And with all of your help, a lot of you in the chat this evening, we truly appreciate your support. I have seen a lot of you reposting the social media posts that we have been putting out there. A lot of you have been reposting the trailer on Facebook, on Instagram. If you all are not following our guest, either on Instagram or Facebook, you need to do so. That would be Heidi is Sketching Summits, I believe on Instagram and Facebook, and Wim at Hiker Metals. He is also Hiker Metals on Instagram and Facebook. You need to follow our amazing partners as well. In Austin, probably for the first time in our 11 episodes, we have an agenda. Oh, boy. I know. (laughs) Well, that means we're just going to stray from it. But Uh, Yeah, we're not going to follow it. But we actually have an agenda because we want to give our guests time and opportunity to share with you all their creation process for our film So, Austin, if you want to introduce our guest, people are sick of looking at us. So let's introduce them and get them on the screen. Let's roll. I can't say enough good things about these folks. So we came to WIM, I guess it was just over a year ago at this point. Exactly Um, a year ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, we told the reporter all about you, WIM. So sorry. (laughs) WIM, 
I consider uh, a good friend now because not only is he supporting Safe and Found, but he supported Julie and I as creators through probably one of the tougher times that that she and I have ever been through. And William, you stuck with us. And I got to tell you, that means a whole lot. Uh, and here and we so are. I, so glad that <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah, so Wim is the owner and founder of Hiker Metals. And if you haven't heard of Hiker Metals, that means you haven't listened to the first 10 episodes of Beyond the Trail <laughs> podcast. Wim, you have some amazing metals. We're going to talk specifically about one in depth, but do you want to talk at all about anything you got on the horizon or anything like that for Hiker Metals? Any new stuff coming out besides the one we're going to talk about? Well, this is big, right? So being being able to be part of this <laughs> is a huge thing for me. And so there is, there's going to be a podcast this year. That's going to be yeah. I'm excited about that. Yeah. yeah. So awesome. I'm a little nervous. So uh, probably the first one will come out in February. We'll do the recording end of January and then the, it will be released in, in February. And it's going to be called uh, Stories That Inspire Us. So we get so many incredible stories, right, through the uh, through the metals. And often it's off through the engraving or you see it on social media or people share a story. And it's it's phenomenal. It's really amazing what people do. And often I have, I, I, I need to talk to these people, right? I need, I want to have, I have so many questions. <laughs> so now I'm gonna, actually going to ask them the questions. So it will be interesting. We'll see. And Will, we'll I will say <laughs> um, your background has outdone all of us. <laughs> Yeah, for um, sure. He actually Reflexing. has the movie poster hanging and framed behind him. So That's bravo, awesome. job well done. And we have another guest. Austin, you want to introduce our next yeah. guest? Not that so, she's not been hanging out on the screen with us already. Yeah. So again, our, our second guest needs no introduction because we have talked to Heidi on Beyond the Trail podcast before. Heidi is joining us because she has created some of the most amazing artwork and I just feel privileged to even just be looking at it. When we were, and we've kind of talked about this a little bit, but when Julie and I were kind of brainstorming how to visually tell the story of Safe and Found, I knew there were going to be some gaps where we were trying to tell a story and there's just no footage that exists. We, you know, There's only so much that you can film. But if you're trying to tell a story about something that happened years ago, you just, you got to figure out another way to, to visually tell that story. And so I knew that we, we were going to have to fill this gap. And I had the idea of trying to do some type of animation. I didn't really know what was going on. And so through happenstance, Julie and I were walking down the street at NC Trail Days and there was Heidi and she had her booth and, and selling her amazing artwork. And we we're like, I th Julie, I think it was your idea, but you're like, as we were walking away, she's, you were like, what if we use Heidi for the artwork for Safe and Found? And I'm like, Oh man. And then my gears went into like 11th gear. I know. Then an explosion happened. Oh we, man. We went to lunch. And if Alonda is on this live with us tonight, Alonda Heron was with us at lunch and she heard the whole banter. I was like, well, we're using Heidi. And Austin was like, well, I, I think, <laughs> but, you know, I, yeah. And I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> we are. <laughs> well, no, because uh, I forget. So we had our meeting with, uh, actually, I think we had our podcast with you shortly after that meeting, Heidi, and then we pitched the idea of bringing you on for the, for the video or for the, the film. We're talking and you're like, Jester's like, oh, we have an announcement. She hasn't actually said yes. I don't know if we can say it. <laughs> and here's the thing. If you listen to the audio version of the show, I took all of that out. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> So Heidi, welcome to the show. Thank you. So we will get to our agenda because we're actually going to turn it over to Heidi and Wim. And this is the way uh, the rest of the show is going to work because the title of this episode is The Making Of. It's also The Creation Of because one of the things that we were talking to about uh, with the reporter this afternoon is how all of this came together from talking to Nancy to see if she would be interested in working with us on a film, talking to Wim and convincing you, Wim, to work with us, and then talking with Heidi and then interviewing everybody that is in the film. And over 15, 16 months have gone by, so it's hard to believe that this entire project has come together and we're all chomping at the bit to show you the film. And Wim has not seen the film. So I guess our first question before we get to your artwork. So Wim, how do you feel about everything now? You've only seen the trailer. 
I know it's it's and all that when you see the trailer, all it is you want to see more, right? It's, <laughs> That's it's the so idea. well done. <laughs> yeah, the first time when I saw the trailer it was just amazing, right? Because we've worked, you know, I've, I've, because I have not done any hard work, right? But you all have done so much hard work on this, and and Austin, I don't know how you do it with all the footage that you have and trying to put that together, and then seeing it come together and getting it, you get a feel of the move of the film already, right? You get the the colors, the, the the sound, kind of the way it's all, yeah, put on video. It's beautiful, right? And but you want to, you want these people have such amazing stories to tell, and that's what you want to hear, right? And what I love, I think, I mean, again, I haven't seen it, and I really want to see it. <laughs> I, I've searched the pirate, the black market, you know, deep. It's it's not there. It's not there yet. So, but so when you think search and rescue, often you think about you know the rescue piece and the helicopters flying in and getting somebody out. There is so much more to it. The search piece is such a big part of it. And then again, without the search, there is no rescue, right? So, and I think that's what this movie is going to show, I think, from based on what I've seen. And of course, when we were there as well, right? When the search and rescue, the training, it's going to show a lot of that piece, right? How hard that piece is, right? That's where all the work really goes in. Then rescue is, I mean, it's still important, right? But then it really happens all up front. So, yeah, can't wait to see it and can't wait to see all of Heidi's Heidi's creation. So I really look forward to that. So Heidi, from your perspective, you have a little bit different perspective because Austin shared with you, a, well, pretty much everything because you had to make the art that was actually going to sit inside the film. So share with us your perspective. It was really interesting to watch the, you know, you started with all of these video clips in a Dropbox file somewhere and I was completely overwhelmed. So hats off to Austin for going through all of that and finding the relevant stuff. I can't imagine what went into went into that for you. But it was very, I mean, the stories are just incredible. And you did a really great job of inter- interviewing these people and them really just relaying these stories. And you must have made them feel very comfortable because their stories are very raw. And they just completely transport the viewer to where they are. So for me, so many of these images that I drew, it just like I didn't even have to think about what that was going to look like because I've hiked in these areas and they just tell this story. And I was like, I know exactly where you were at. I know exactly what you mean by this and what it looks like when it's snowing here. So they, they did a really good job of transporting the viewer into their really quite terrifying scenarios. I'll just say this too, is like, like I'm on trail all the time and I work as a guide and Since I started working as a guide, there has been a lot of this like worst case scenario kind of looming over my head in a way that that didn't or just doesn't when I hike recreationally. But then I piled this documentary on top of it. I've just been like, well, like, okay, you guys have all of our evacuation points figured out to somebody. You know, it's just it's really like, you know, I go out all the time and it's it's very easy to forget to kind of have your 10 essentials and cover cover everything that you need to cover. And, you know, after this, it's just been like a really, really good reminder. It's a t- kind of terrifying reminder of like, you know, you really are putting yourself at risk the moment you step on trail. And, and what can you do to, to make sure that that risk is eliminated? One of the things we talked about with that reporter today was how the process of putting this film together has kind of morphed as we've moved through it. So one of the things, I don't think we've talked about this on the podcast yet, but when we brought Heidi on, we we showed her a draft of the beginning of the film. And you made some comment, but it was about Nancy East's book. And you made some comment about it. It You already knew the, the, the story because you had read Nancy's book. And that just, it was like a, a lightning bolt for Julie and I. And we completely changed the beginning of the film uh, because of that. I like it better now anyway. Yeah, I called Austin. I was like, Absolutely <laughs> not. Could this be the beginning? <laughs> yeah, we changed the beginning of the film, and I, I honestly think it's better now. But yeah, so, so Heidi, Heidi's been there with us pretty pretty close to the beginning of the post production phase. Uh, you know, we finished filming. Now it's time to pile everything together into this timeline and, and edit it together. It's been a journey. But the other thing I love about Heidi, your work, and I already sent you a message about this, but the fact that you're familiar with these areas, the fact that you already have a passion for the outdoors, it just comes through so clearly in the artwork and the attention to detail. Because I could tell like you had gone through and listened to the interviews before you did the the work. And so there were little 
little nuances because I have listened to, I have watched every single second of B-roll and listened to every single second of interview for this entire film. So I can hear it and I can recognize it because I've listened to it so many darn times. But yeah, the little details that you put into it definitely did not go unnoticed. I hope everyone else can can appreciate it as much as much as Julie and I do. But yeah, awesome stuff. We should get into some of those details and I'll go back to the agenda that we have for this yeah. evening. Oh, and yeah, I, the agenda. You know, yeah, the loose agenda that we have for this <laughs> evening. So what we are going to do is we're going to start with Heidi. This is a very unique thing that I don't know if I've ever seen creators do is we are going to give you guys an inside look to Heidi and some of her art in the creation process. And then we're going to switch over to Wim and his creation process with the metal that he created specifically to coincide with the film. Heidi, let's start with you. And everybody should still be able to hear us. For those of you that are listening to the audio version, we encourage you to come over and watch the YouTube version because you certainly want to see these renderings and behind the scenes work. So Heidi, I'm going to flip this over. And do you just want to tell everybody what this piece is before I start playing? So before you start playing, so I did all of the illustrations in Procreate, which is a program on an iPad. So I'm using an Apple pen to draw. And this is something that I really only started. I've done one other pro full project this way before this. I do not have a lot of experience with digital art, but it's made stuff like this a lot easier because I can go and do the whole drawing, re-listen to the interview and realize, oh, wait, it was supposed to be snowing for this scene. And I don't have to redraw it. It's just digital so I can erase and I can add to it. So that's why I decided to use that medium for this for this project. And for this scene, you know, it's it's going over Nancy reading from her book and talking about the process of being on a search and going off trail and stumbling over leaf litter and wet rocks while she's looking for somebody. So if you want to go ahead and start the progress video, then people can kind of see what it started as. But I'm using a lot of my own photos here and doing a lot of photo shoots to get the reference images. So I just go outside in my own shoes and find some rocks. And then from there, I'm digging through. I mean, this this photo is actually a still from a video I took on my Appalachian Trail through hike five years ago. I liked these ferns. I liked this moss. I liked those leaves over there. I liked that rock. And so I'm pulling all of these in. A lot of it's that same perspective of looking down over my shoes and just pulling in the components I like from different photographs and then drawing those in using an airbrush brush on Procreate. Should we play it one more time? Did everybody get the perspective? Because I feel like I have to watch this multiple times. Roll that beautiful bean footage. It's almost like sad to watch it in this 30-second replay because they, <laughs> they took so much longer than that. But yeah, just all, all of the reference photos you're seeing, actually a lot of them are stills from videos that I've taken to be like, you know, just on Instagram and say, look at this. Look at this crap I have to hike over, you know, like, look at these leaves and look at that. But the first photo that you saw there, I actually had to go out and take that picture balancing on some rocks myself because I didn't have any good photos of me walking, you know, an off trail terrain. You know, most of those photos of me looking down at my feet is, is on a smooth trail because if it's really that rocky, I'm not bothering with my phone. Well, you are getting kudos in the chat, Heidi. Wonderful artwork. That's just incredible. And yeah, that's just one piece, you guys, of 20 that you will see in the film and the artwork as well. So yeah, that's just incredible, wonderful artwork. So amazing. And that's just a little taste, quite honestly. We had an idea of the storyline and kind of there were different shots that we were trying to, you know, those gaps we were trying to fill. It had to have been frustrating on your end because we would give you just these like huge umbrellas of guidance. Make something that, you know, includes these people doing something. And so that, I, I don't know if that's good or bad as an artist to to give you such a broad stroke. Gave the, the very appropriate amount of direction. I think when we started <laughs> or a lot of the video was put together, I started to feel a little bit overwhelmed over how much content there was to be watched and then not having a full understanding of like what was going to go in and out. But really, after that illustration that we just saw, that second one, you came back with a, a lot more, you know, cohesive. And, and then exactly what you said, where you're like, here's a vague scene that this and then it's like, that's all I needed was just sort of like one direction. Otherwise, I would be like, you know, doing all this work and be like, what if this isn't even, this scene doesn't even get in? <laughs> That's, that was exactly what I was trying to avoid. Because I was like, I know how much work goes yeah, into each part one of the these. I don't want okay, it to be cool. for Part of the I need to know, and then I can go with it. So I, I thought you guys did the perfect amount of direction. 
Well, good. And it worked. And we have one more of Heidi's coming up. But in the meanwhile, Wim, we are going to flip over here. And when I pulled this up, I was like, this is the coolest thing. I don't even know what you call this. I just keep calling a rendering. So we've got the full metal here underneath you. And then I don't know if this is what you started with. You're going to have to explain it to us, Wim. Yeah, it's funny. Right? So I just, uh, for the record, right, I'm not an artist like like Heidi is. Heidi is a true artist, right? And uh, Heidi, I see you do murals and actual paintings and all that kind of stuff. For the life of me, I can't paint, right? Or I can't draw. But I use this, I, my technique is very similar to Heidi's actually when you talked about the iPad. Because I use, well, start with inspiration, right? And that's, you know, you, you search uh, the internet. Because it's really important that when you make a metal, that you capture the essence of the hype. Right, that somebody who has done it say, oh yeah, my gosh, right, I, everything is reflected in it. So I st- it's very similar technique. So I get I, I get the, the the inspiration, the elements that I think should be in the in the design, and then I'm kind of pulling it together, right? And, and I use it also for an, as a, as an, as a background, and then I, I I just start drawing, and I don't really then draw. It's really dot by dot. I put it together, right? So. Uh, thank you to the uh, to the iPad. So this one was interesting because you all asked me and I had never been to the Smokies. So I've never been there. So, but then of course, thank you to the internet. But then also I was wondering, okay, what, what is important for people to have in a metal? It's actually a really hard scenery because there's a lot of forest, right? And forest is not easy to do in a metal, right? It gets very quickly, very cartoonish, which is trying to avoid. I found a picture that was the inspiration for the backgrounds. It was a license picture, so it couldn't really show, but because that gave me the colors, right? With the sunset, and you have all these different layers. So, but that alone doesn't do anything, right? If I have metal with those uh, th- those uh, rolling hills, that's not going to do it. So I, 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 there has to be something special. And I've done the topographic lines before, where you kind of draw the lines and you see that in, in the metal. I'm going to try with this one to make it actual layers, right? To see the the height differences. And I think, and it's been a while now, but it's, uh, yeah, and it's really hard to see on this, on the other uh, later one, we'll be able to see a little bit better. It starts with a blank slate indeed as well, and then you just start to start drawing. But so I had a topographic map and just, and I had, a, it was kind of a heat map. So each height has a different color. So I just started tracing each color to get to six different levels. And that took forever. That was just, it was, it, this, this metal by far took, I think it took three, four weeks before I really had it all done. And I'm not working on it all the time, of course, but it was a lot of work. But I'm really happy with the end result because it does give that little, that, that oomph factor, right, for the metal. And actually the ribbon is part of that. The ribbon is almost my favorite part of the metal because it has that same topographic map. And then it's as art, right? It's really as I, I just blew it up and then as art. So that's, yeah, that's how it starts. And uh, yeah, happy with the result. And well, yeah, I'm just pleased that people really seem to like it. Yeah. Do you like how Austin, everybody has said, this took the longest and this took me hours, I, you know, Heidi's hours. She can't even talk about how long it webbed, you know, weeks to put this together. Are, I'm proud of us, Austin. Yeah. And it's it's easy to, like, especially when, when we look at, at Heidi's artwork and we look at the at the medals and and when we look at the the film on the 20th, it's easy to just kind of take it all in, you know, for the 46 minutes of the premiere and whatnot. All of us have put in just countless hours to make it, make this film, make this project what it is. That's why I love this episode. That's why I was looking forward to it so much, because we get to talk a little bit about all of that just nitty gritty in the weeds work that it takes to create something like this project. So I love it. I love it all. Heidi has another piece, and I'm biased. This is my favorite piece, and it's been out to the world, out on social media. And Heidi, you killed it today on your Instagram with your quote and what you did. So let's go ahead and take you over. And do you want to start walking, um, not giving too, too much information, but give a little insight of this picture? The scene is um, with... David, after he uh, is is in the woods for a few days and he's talking about taking his shoes and socks off and setting them by the fire to dry and having his feet in the snow while trying to warm them by the fire. And so most of the uh, most of the these pictures and these really specific scenes, like I don't have reference pictures 
and my figure drawing isn't good enough to be just completely inventive. And so almost all of the figures that you're seeing in this is either myself or my husband, Raph. Uh, so we were in Colorado for Thanksgiving um, and it actually had just snowed outside and I almost made him go outside and sit in the snow. And I was like, no, I can figure out how to draw. They'll so see um, uh, I put a picture of Wrath. I'm like, put on your puppy coat, put your trail runners to the side. I want them, you know, in the front. So it's a little bit more foreshortened. You can see Ellie in the background, which is uh, my brother-in-law's dog. Um, so she was joining for it. And I was tempted to put her into the scene as well because she's just so cute. But um, it really wouldn't have been that accurate. Just using him as a reference, you know, that you can pay attention to um, his left foot on our right. He was very unhappy with how that one looked to start. Um, and I had to go back in and work on that foot three or four times before Ross deemed it acceptable to go out into the world. He's like, no, my feet don't look like that. And I'm like, they actually do because I traced it. OK, I'll put a different photo <laughs> that instead. Um, and then the fire was really fun because they make a brush that looks that's called flame, you know. And so I just kind of got to block in the the black and whites for the sticks and then coming in with just a simple brush and, and adding those um, those swoopies, if you will. And then, um, yeah, inventing the background and, and the texture for the snow. I put up a quote from Tangent Trails. Wow. And that's really what I'm still thinking. And I have seen this thing and I can't, I'm, I'm so, I'm still looking at it. I forgot to flip the screen over to show all of this. Just wow. It nails it because there's a portion of the film. There's a story that we talk about where there's some, some folks lost in the woods in January in Shining Rock Wilderness. And, the, you know, there's, there's tons of snow on the ground and it's super, super cold, like in the teens. And we're trying to convey cold through a visual sensation rather than actually feeling it we wanted to make the viewers cold and what could be more cold than putting your feet in the snow and so just that that was just it conveys the feeling so well i'm just so happy with how everything came out it's a little off script but so heidi so i love this movie poster right so because i love the 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 colors when I, this is the first artwork i saw that you made for the movie yeah, so the the co cover was also created through Procreate, and I um, that that program has been really easy to learn for me working in black and white, and so that's why I accepted this project. They said black and white, and I was like, okay, cool, I'll do it. And color has been really intimidating and really challenging to do, uh, but they have this really great photo from one of the searches that happened that that they talked about in the film um, that that you guys had provided me with, and it was just this really great scene of everybody, of a lot of the team standing on the side of the mountain with the sunset in the background. And so I used that as my reference and uh, just kind of did it several different ways and played with a lot of different brush options until I got something that kind of looked like that sunset. And I really loved, it was actually from the photograph that somebody just took on their phone, you know, during the search, the highlighter yellow clothing that the search and rescue team had, where they're mostly silhouetted, but then that bright, bright yellow is showing. And then they're silhouetted against the purple mountains. And then that yellow is kind of reflected in the sky. And so I just thought, I saw that photo and really appreciated the color scheme of it and used that as, uh, as the inspiration and then just kind of changed the composition to be um, a little bit more symmetrical and even and make sure we had good representation of male to female ratio in the rescuers and searchers that were standing there. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Austin had a had a cue for me when he was making suggestions for the cover. He was like, I was kind of thinking like Band of Brothers. And I was like, got it. I showed it to my husband. He goes, it reminds me of Band of Brothers. And I was like, there, bam, did it. <laughs> Every time that I would secretly just open the Google Drive to see if you had put another yeah. photo in there, not secretly, I, I guess no one cares, but me, you and Austin. And then Austin would beat me to one and I'd be like, dang it, he saw it before me. <laughs> <laughs> just thank you so much. And it's been such a pleasure to work with you and in this whole process. And we could say that now after we're like out of the thick of it. And I, I'm pretty much in celebration mode. So, Wim, let's flip you back over. And I think I have the exact picture that you were talking about with the layers that you'll have to explain to us. OK, yeah. So so I work with a factory, right? So they have to actually produce it. So they they create a mold and it takes takes them about one to two days to actually make that. Right. Because it's it's it starts with a, just a piece of metal. 
And they, with all kinds of tools, they have to start creating the mold that then is being used to create all these, all these metals. But to make sure there's no, so most of the metals that you see that you get at races, they're kind of two-dimensional flat, right? You have the metal pieces and then stuff gets filled with uh, the, the paint. So the challenge I always have, you can't do gradients, right? So like if you talk, so there's this beautiful uh, artwork that Heidi made so, uh, behind me. You can't really do that in the metal because you can't do gradients. So you always, it, there's, there has to be a border and then you go from one color to the other. But what this shows is really to the factory. So on the, on the right, you see the millimeters, right? So that's, uh, so di- because it, what you see here is all metal. It doesn't show what's going to get filled with the animal, right, with the paint. So this shows exactly. So when you make that mold, the different colors, right? So if it's green, if it's yellow, if it's a yellow, that's four millimeters thick. If it's green, it's four point two. So and this is where you see when you see the the topographic map that you have six different layers, right? And it's it's incredible what they can do, how how detailed they can get, right? Because honestly, if you look at the metal itself, I have it in front of me, you wouldn't tell, right? You can't see that there's six layers. But you would see the difference if there's only two layers, right? So, uh, but this is how they make it, right? So I send it to them. That's also then there's no confusion about, for example, the trees that you see, they have to be at different depths, right? So uh, it can't be all flat. This, so then because of this, this is how I communicate with them. Like this is how I want, I want it to be. So yeah, so it works really well. It looks really weird when you look at it like this, but it works really well in communicating with the, with the factory who makes them. Well, show us that metal since you have one right beside you. I don't know. It's going it's on camera, but yeah, that's that's the oh, that's it. Yeah. So awesome. and this is the uh, the ribbon, right? Yeah. Tell us about the ribbon. So the ribbon is so it's the it's the same, right? But I use different colors. So I enlarged it, and that's what I always like. I mean, and then I blow it up, right? And it turns into a piece of art a little bit, and change the colors, and then uh, yeah, it's the same, but the same artwork, but then different colors, and then yeah, it's, I love this one. It's really really nice, honestly, the way the ribbon turned out. But yeah, and this is the metal. And then, Wim, you can uh, move to the side just a little bit because we want to see that full artwork that you have in the poster. And at the very bottom, this might be one of my favorite parts. Um, As you guys are looking, in this poster, you have a combination of Wim and Heidi now because, Wim, tell everybody what you did to the bottom there. You added something to that. Yeah, because when when I saw you had sent out the artwork, and I thought, man, this can this is a true movie poster, right? And he, I, at the bottom you have this. So yeah, we we added that, right? So this it has produced by, supported by artwork, music. It's all on there. Yeah, it's all on there. It's kind of cool. It looks almost <laughs> as if we know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost. <laughs> Let me be clear. When it comes to art, I know nothing about what I'm doing. I can draw nothing. I have ideas. And then I go, hey, can you make this happen? Or what is it like with the metal? And, you know, with Heidi, with the artwork, I, I have no idea. So th- this is why I'm just so proud of this. And we haven't even shown the film. I'm just so proud of it. It's been great to work with all of you. Austin might be ready to fire me at this point. Austin, what are your thoughts on all of this with the combination? It, give these guys some accolades. You know, I know. So Julie and I, our first project together was I Am the MST. And we pretty much did that ourselves. And so, you know, it was, I, I, I think it was a good first project. But walking away from it, I learned a ton. And one of the things that, that we learned was that things can be so much better if we bring in people that know what they're doing. And so that's what we wanted to do with Safe and Found with this project. Before we even knew what to call it, we didn't, you know, we hadn't even come up with the title yet. We're like, we need to bring in, this needs to be a team effort. And man, it has turned out better than we could have possibly hoped for. Wim, with, with everything that you've done for us and Heidi, all of the artwork, I mean, it's just, I could not be more proud of this project and being a part of it because I really think we have all created something pretty amazing. And not to toot our own horn, but I'm going to toot our own horn. I think I think we've done some pretty great stuff here. And it's just, it's great. I just love it. So let's get to down to the brass tacks now. We need everyone to come to the premiere if you are in the area. If you're not, if you're like Wim, he's coming from Texas. And we do have somebody coming from California. So really, there's no excuse. We are showing the film Saturday, January 20th. Doors open at 2 o'clock. And I'm going to put Heidi and Wim on the spot. Heidi and Wim will be there selling some of their art. 
some of the medals. So, Heidi, what can people expect to purchase from you the day of the if film? If you're familiar with my work, I do have a lot of uh, watercolor paintings, mostly Western North Carolina or Appalachian Trail. So I'll have uh, prints of those, postcards, greeting cards. Uh, some of the normal stuff I sell at festivals, trying to keep, you know, price points easy and impulsive. Uh, but for this event specifically, I will be having prints of these illustrations uh, per y'all's request. I don't know how many of them, you know, they're, they're yes. definitely made for the film and not necessarily to hang on your wall. But if you want a picture of my husband's feet on your wall, I'll go right ahead. So I'll have a handful of the from the film. Um, available for purchase as well. I have a bunch of like stickers that I sell for some of the trails in the area um, and some of the specific mountains. Wim, what can people expect? I know metals are hard to carry on a plane. So again, if you need to ship anything to us, let us know. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so I'll definitely have the Smokies medal there. So uh, we'll make sure it's a good deal. Uh, Normally 10%, make it 20% what's sold there of everything will go to, to Haywood County, right? Search and Rescue. I was thinking of bringing the engraving machines, but I don't know about the, cause they, they, I don't know about the, 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 the plane, if that's possible, cause then we could engrave, right? It's always cool that you can oh. engrave on the back, but I don't know if I really want to do it on the plane. I mean, they, they fit in a, in a case. So I'll, I'll bring some. I, I, I have 70 designs, so I'm not sure which one to bring. I may run by, by you all, see which ones would probably be good to Appalachian Trail, of course. But, Mount uh, the Sea. Oh, yeah. Oh. Of course. Yes. Duh, of course. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. So yeah, but that's, yeah, we'll, but we're just glad to be there. We are very grateful. We can't say that enough. We are very thankful. I guess to round this out before Austin and I do our closing uh, banter, is there anything on the horizon beyond the film that you want to tell people about? Wim, I know you said you have your podcast coming up. We will 100% make sure the listeners have that information. Heidi? One thing I can talk about, I'll be starting a mural in February at uh, Confluence in Bremerton, which is just south of Belmont. So yeah. just outside of Charlotte, um, commissioned by the Catawba River Keepers. So if anybody wants to see mural progress, that'll be getting posted like crazy in February. A lot of other really cool projects that I can't talk about because they're not firm yet. So just stay tuned. And again, we started a month-long campaign to raise funds for the Western North Carolina Wilderness Safety Fund. If you have an extra dollar in your pocketbook, send it on over to uh, the fund. They would truly, truly appreciate that. If you have not watched the film trailer, please head on over to Jester Wallace Productions' YouTube channel. The film trailer is on the channel. And then we also have a film website where you can find out all of our information about the premiere. And Austin, you say that so well, what the uh, website is, because when I was editing the episode the other night, you said it so well with adding the dashes. So go for it. So safe dash and dash found with the dashes in between the words. Austin, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the work that you did. As a side note, y'all, this was not easy. This was not easy on Austin. This was not easy on me, even though we knew all along with all of the hard work that went into this, that we would be proud of it. But I'm going to tell you right now, the process was tough. The process was painful. It was tough. It was tough, <laughs> but we're proud of it. We yeah. hope to see you all on the 20th. In the meantime, everybody, check out the website. Should I close out with the trailer? Yeah, why not? You got it yeah, loaded? I do yeah, have I it loaded. That's a great way to finish it up. Yeah. So, Austin, I love you to death. Be safe out there, everybody. And good times. None of the folks that we rescue wake up in the morning and go, you know, I think I want to be lost in the woods for three days in 25 degree weather and six inches of snow. That would be cool. Nobody, nobody makes that calculation. It just happens sometimes. I had zero, I knew that there was zero percent chance that we would be found alive. We want people to go out. We all go out and enjoy these areas. And we want everybody to go out and do that, do it safely and return home. These, these men and women, these guys and girls, they give up hundreds of hours of their life each year to go out and to look for and to save other people's lives. That's right. How, how do you say thank you to somebody for putting their own life at risk? How do you thank you? The words thank you do not even 
come close to the emotions that pass over me when I think about them. <laughs>